Hi, thank you so much for taking my call. Um, Betty, I'm going to try not to cry. but oh, Don't I, cry, Laura. Yeah, it, it's actually Marna, but they mispronounced no. it, and that's perfectly appropriate. But I just want to tell you that uh, I, I did watch you a long time ago in Password with your, uh, I think it was before you were even married, or I don't know if you were married before you started appearing on Password. No, or no, I met, I met Ellen on camera on Password. That's what I thought, but I was just going to tell you that I know you've done so many things to inspire people just by the work that you do with animals, etc. but I wanted to tell you that there was an interview with you uh, shortly after your husband died, and it struck me, and it has stayed with me for decades. And what you said was you regretted the time that you wasted playing hard to get. I, I wasn't playing hard to get. I, I wasted a whole year we could have been together. I lived in California. He lived in New York. No, I won't marry you. No, I won't move to New York. But I had had two bad marriages before that, and I felt like, you know, I didn't deserve anything else. But... He was a pretty good salesman, and he found a way to, to, but I wasted that whole year that we could have been together. Oh, Laura, thank you so much. I'm so glad you called. Uh, Laura mentioned your love of animals. You're wearing this glamorous uh, two-piece with uh, wild cats of, of the Serengeti on it, and oh, of course your work at the zoo. Uh, what, what led you to your love for animals, big and small? I know your parents took you up into the Sierras uh, riding when you were a little girl. Where did this all come from? Uh, maybe since the womb, my mother and dad were the same the same animal nuts that I am. But animals have been such a joy and such a comfort, and they never they never you can't lie to them, and they can't lie they don't lie to you, and you can't lie to them. I think that's what always makes me so comfortable about them. I know when when we become friends, we're really friends. And uh, you've you've got a few at home now. One, one golden retriever. He's a career change guide dog, and he's he's his name is Pontiac. I didn't name him. You call him Ponty. Ponty, and better uh, than Ack. Well, he, he they named him that. I think of it as the Indian chief, not the car. <laughs> but when the car business went down, when the Pontiac car went out of business, I sat him down and I said, "No, Ponty, it wasn't anything you did." <laughs> <laughs> but, but he listened so carefully and the ears went up. <laughs> oh. And, of course, all the work you do at the zoo is so appreciated. Oh, I love that zoo. That's my other home. As you know, I've been working with them for 48 years now. And uh, it, I hope everybody will come out and see what a beautiful zoo Los Angeles has. I got hooked on the zoo when I was appalled that a city like Los Angeles had such a bad zoo. So instead of demonstrating or anything like that, I we decided to work with them, and we've come a long way. It's a beautiful zoo. I'm so touched when I hear you talk about animals. I get all kind of fluttery inside. So uh, what do you, you have? Oh, I have uh, I call them multicultural canines because they're all mixed up rescues. Well, that's the, they're the, the best, best kind. kind. Absolutely the best kind. Uh, they they know that they got lucky and they're appreciative. And of it. boy, do the, does gratitude say. <laughs> <laughs> Can't always say it about people, but you can always say it about you sure can. Betty White is here. We'll be back in a moment. You can call and talk to her if you like. Her new book is If You Ask Me, and of course you won't, you haven't, and you will at 866-893-5722. <laughs> in the meantime, we'll get a quick update on the floods in the Mississippi from Hetty Lynn Hurdy's. Morrison Betty White is here with her book, If You Ask Me, and of course you won't, talking about her decades in show business and a few decades more in life altogether. <laughs> and you can talk to her, too, at 866-893-5722. Uh, you've heard the saying, it may have been Jane Fonda, that there are three phases of women in entertainment, babe, district attorney, and driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> You, you must be giving us another one here, because you've got kind of a wink and a nudge going on. Oh, well, I've got a rather bawdy sense of humor, so I just <laughs> I enjoy whatever comes by. <laughs> there are some great stories in the book reflecting just that about you were accepting award once, talked about you know a number of people in the audience you knew and some of them you have had. <laughs> oh, well, no, that was just a that, uh, that was one, it was the Lifetime Achievement Award, the Screen Actors Guild, and I got up to say thank you, and I, I still get terribly impressed with celebrities. I, I always have, and I've been in the business all my life. 
but I, I got up on stage and I, turned, I looked out and every face I saw was somebody famous. <laughs> <laughs> so I said it, what a thrill it was and that I've worked with, you know, so, even worked with some of them and uh, even had a few. <laughs> 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 I, I had, so afterwards I went backstage and then came out again just as George Clooney was talking to the audience he said I want to thank Betty White for her discretion <laughs> <laughs> I love that anecdote oh let's hear from you as we're talking to Betty White Adam is in West Hollywood uh, Adam thank you go ahead hi Betty it's, a, it's an honor to talk to you and thanks for taking my call oh thank I, you um, Adam I uh, I'm 32 years old and I grew up in the Golden Girls as a gay man um uh, you know, I was particularly interested this week when I heard you say that there is a there is a natural affinity that gay men have for old ladies, and I, I'm wondering if you would expand on that and kind of explain what you were thinking. I read that earlier this week, I think. I don't know the context. Well, it's it's a, through my life, and it, it, well, and all the Golden Girls, the other girls, the same. Uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful gay audience. The, um, Saturday nights when our show was on, they would shut off the music and turn on Golden Girls and watch it and then turn off the television and go back to dancing. But there, there's always been such an affinity, and I, I would like to ask you what that affinity is, but it's such a relaxed, comfortable friendship that it's, it's, it's much appreciated. What do you think, Adam? You know, I want to put my finger on it as well, but um, I, I think to some of the episodes of the Golden Girls specifically where where uh, Rose had to deal with uh, a lesbian falling in love with her and dealing with that and, and then an HIV and AIDS scare um, back when that was such a brand new topic to talk about. So I, I, I think it's cutting edge and then and then not only was were the characters that uh, accepting, but, but then all four of the Golden Girls, but particularly you, Betty, um, being willing to talk about that in in your personal life and, and kind of go beyond the characters that's that's what it is for me well thank you believe me it's much appreciated and i think if more of us felt i don't care who you sleep with it's the kind of person that you are that that i think is important roberto is calling us from ontario thanks roberto hi how are you guys doing this is really awesome speaking to betty white i am so stoked right now and as a marine and knowing other marines i watch you and watch that saturday night Saturday Night Live episode, that was awesome. And that's what my question is about. How was that experience for you, people petitioning and doing whatever they could to get you on Saturday Night Live? How did that change your view on how we watch TV now as a society and what we expect from our sketch comedy? Oh, that's a good question, Roberto. There's a lot in the book about how what it took to get Betty White on Saturday Night Live and what happened when she got there. Oh, well, Lauren...